two of the rules of procedure on a proposal from the president and with the agreement of the political groups I'd like to inform the house that the vote on the act in support of ammunition production will be held on Thursday the 13th of July the deadlines will be the following amendments need to be tabled by today the 11th of July at 1 p.m. split and separate votes will have to be put in by 7 p.m. today so I've opened the sitting the first item on the agenda is the report by Mr. Luena on nature restoration and I'd like to give the floor to the rapporteur for his presentation Monsieur. Monsieur. The floor is yours. Ya ve, presidente, que tengo hasta público. Thank you. It's enough audience for me. Thank you, President, Commissioner, Minister. I think the time has come to have a tranquil debate on nature, and I'm going to have one last stab at convincing you. Please be reasonable for three reasons. Firstly, for the future. The law says that we need to restore uh, bio uh, uh, ecosystems and habitats because 95% of habitats are in a poor situation. 48% of crops depend on pollinization by insects. Insects are disappearing. 70% of soil is degraded, which puts production of food in danger and makes ecosystems more vulnerable to extreme climate events. For the last 40 years, Europe has been warming at twice the global rate. The well-being of people improves the more green areas there are, reducing pollution and reducing the danger of zoonotic disease. I didn't make that up. We didn't make that up. This comes from IPBES, the Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, comes from the uh, Soils Observatory and the latest Copernicus Climate Report. It's science. The law is good for all, but particularly farmers, uh, fishers, and everyone else who is actively involved in working alongside ecosystems. The Green Deal will only be possible if uh, it, we have a nature restoration law to go with it. The Parliament's role is also important, which brings me on to my next point. We've been building Europe for 70 years now, and we do not uh, yet have legislation which directly applies to nature. So the European Parliament today and tomorrow should not go down in history as having been a blocking agent. So I say to the EPP, a bit thin on the ground, but I say to those of you who are here that we do need this law to go through to get rid of that veto so that we can hold the discussions which we need to hold. And the next point, for the sake of history, Mr Weber, perhaps held up in traffic, uh, took uh, a dangerous uh, journey from uh, Turing into Zonnenberg, I call you not to uh, do away with the cordon sanitaire. Do not go for the reactionary embrace. This proposal is defended by and presented by Ursula von der Leyen. Name may ring a few bells. And in council, countries like Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Croatia, Greece, Ireland, Romania, Lithuania. Ring any bells, those countries? Uh, they've got the EPP family in power in those countries. So, we've had lots of fake news about this law. I'll just pick on one, that it will put food security at risk in Europe. Look at the science, look at the facts. It's quite the opposite. We actually need fertile soil and pollinisers in order to achieve food security. Thank you all for all of the work which has gone into this, Araya Rodriguez, uh, uh, the three of you who've put in so much effort on uh, working on this law. I'd also like to tell you something which has not been in the 
public domain. The EPP was negotiating a lot of these compromises, had EPP support, and then Mr Weber said, no, we pull out. So thanks to all of those who, who were working in the meantime, and I'd like to thank all of the S&D team. It would not have been possible to come so far without you. And those who are outside NGOs, scientists, the associations of uh, environmentalists and uh, others, I don't have much time, so I'll leave it there. Thank you, President. What we're calling on you, those of us as groups or individuals who support this will support it, but others, please give it a chance because otherwise Parliament will go down in history as being an obstacle to a law on nature. So for the future, for the sake of the role of this uh, Parliament and for the sake of history, vote in favour. Moving on to the representative of the Commission on Agriculture and Rural Development, Ms. Anne Sander. Thank you very much, President, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Protecting ecosystems and restoring them is a necessity that we share wholeheartedly. But restoring nature cannot mean a stop of all handicraft production, forestry or agricultural production. Not producing, sorry, no, producing is not a bad word. What we're seeing on the table, well, despite the health crisis, despite the geopolitical situation, the Commission and part of this chamber is not actually taking into account reality in the world. 10% of our agricultural territory is, is something they're claiming is not risking our food security. But food production from agriculture is not going to, uh, uh, pursuant to this law, allow us to be the best in the world at producing. We might, may be, we might be able to reduce uh, our pesticide use here, but the rest of the world is still going to need to be fed. We're, we're still going to also have to import food from the four corners of the world where the standards are a long way from ours and the environmental, is, the environmental impact of this will be negligible. So yes, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Timmermans, withdraw this proposal. Go back to the drawing board, come back with a pragmatic approach that will actually help defend nature and restore it. Patreta. Moving on to the representative of the Committee on Fisheries, Ms. Caroline Rose. Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Commissaire. Mr. President, Commissioner, for years scientists have been warning of the dangers to uh, nature. We're already seeing uh, very serious consequences, not least for uh, fishers. Marine ecosystems are uh, deteriorating. It is important to take uh, uh, the appropriate measures in each situation. The EPP has been spreading fake news on this subject. They said the nature restoration law was going to create famine in Europe. The experts said, no, we need uh, bees. We need uh, uh, marine ecosystems in good uh, condition. Without nature, there is no food. You've been saying on social media that the nature restoration law is uh, 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 going to uh, destroy uh, our uh, land. I do hope that uh, uh, people in the EPP and Renew will think of the uh, image of this house and also the fate of farmers and fishers across Europe. Thank you. Moving on now to the representative of the European Commission, Commissioner Sinkiewicz. You have the floor. President, State Secretary, honorable members. First of all, I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to address you today on the crucial role that nature plays for our future. And let me start by thanking Rapporteur, Mr. Luena, all shadow rapporteurs and the rapporteurs of the two opinion giving committees, Ms. Sander and Ms. Roos, and the many of you who I met over the last year, and even more so in recent weeks, to discuss the Commission proposal 
for nature restoration that we've presented in June 2022. And I hope that these discussions have led to a better understanding or even convergence of each other's positions, because that's what decision-making in the EU is all about. This law is nothing less than the flagship initiative of the European Green Deal, nature and biodiversity pillar, and it's intrinsically linked to its climate pillar. It's the first EU legal proposal on nature since 30 years. It is the EU's climate law for biodiversity, and the success of one depends the success on the other. During the last year, the Commission has worked very closely with all actors involved, and we have listened very carefully to the full range of issues that have been raised and to your concerns. Several of you made it clear that additional flexibility was needed, in particular on some of the provisions that may not have been clear enough and thus were considered as potentially hampering economic activities. And many member states have raised similar issues. We acknowledge that and we have consequently showed openness to revisit and improve certain provisions and to enhance clarity, making sure the proposal reflects the current reality. On that basis, we have outlined possible ways forward in the non-paper which we submitted to you and to the Council on the 8th of June. We very much welcome the positive response of the Member States to our recent non-paper and the fact that Council took responsibility engaged constructively and agreed on general approach on 20th of June. And I understand that the Spanish presidency now stands ready to engage in trial of negotiations, provided, of course, that the European Parliament adopts its mandate. Honourable members, in the past weeks we have seen an intense debate on our proposal. Because the questions, they are complex. Because these issues are crucial for our collective future. And because the stakes are high. Proof of this is the unprecedented mobilization for this law from citizens, and in particular the youth, with around one million signatures collected in support of the law, from hundreds of businesses in renewable energy, food and other sectors, including some of Europe's biggest corporations, from farmers and foresters concerned about the impacts of biodiversity on their land and production from over 6,000 scientists from civil society organizations across the EU, as well as from international organizations such as IUCN and the UNEP. That debate showed very clearly that there is very broad consensus that we need to restore nature and that we can constructively discuss and find solutions on how. The consequences of the climate and biodiversity crisis are becoming increasingly visible, also here in the European Union they already affect nearly every citizen and every sector of the economy. And they are among the biggest threats to the long-term resilience of Europe's food security. In order to ensure the long-term food security and resilience of our farmlands, forests, our seas, we must improve their biodiversity conditions. And some of these ecosystems are already severely threatened by the growing impacts of climate change in almost all parts of Europe, with droughts, fires, degraded soils that risk food production and livelihoods, especially in the rural areas. Science is crystal clear. Far too much of Europe, nature has now been degraded or destroyed. So it's vital to reverse that trend, and time is running out. Some 80% of EU habitat types are now in bad or poor condition. Half of the global GDP depends on nature, and 75% of our crops depends on pollination. European Central Bank found that 72% of the euro area firms, about 3 million, are highly exposed to nature-related services, such as timber, clean water, pollination, sand, or healthy soils, and depended on at least one of them, sometimes more. 75% of bank loans are to firms that depend on ecosystem services. So financial institutions are clearly exposed as well. The unsustainable use of natural resources already costs thousands of lives and billions of euros. Between 1980 and 2021, weather and climate-related damages amounted to an estimated 560 billion euros. And the severe droughts experience in the EU in August last year led to losses in agricultural production averaging between 5 and 10% for crops like grain, 
maize, sunflower, and soybeans. Droughts, floods, and forest fires have become part of new reality. While they are driven by climate change, the degradation of ecosystems and their weakened resilience due to biodiversity loss accelerates and intensifies the impacts of these events. These are figures. But even more important are the people behind these figures. Reversing this trend by restoring degraded nature must therefore be our shared responsibility. Honorable members, it's my sincere hope that the openness showed by the Commission with the norm paper, that the Council's general approach, as well as the proposal presented last week by the Commission to complete the nature pillar of the European Green Deal, that all these elements can facilitate today's discussion, that they reassure those who felt that the Commission's initial position was too far-reaching, and they remain still convinced to those who would have expected even higher ambition for the nature restoration. The Green Deal is a highly pragmatic approach to solving the climate and biodiversity crisis. Climate solutions without nature solutions are half measures. Let me give you a couple examples. Making soils healthy, it's not good just for farmers, foresters, and habitat. It's also essential for ensuring the soils can store carbon. Carbon-rich so soils in turn store water and mitigate the consequences of flash storms. Dead soils do none of that. Boosting innovation, new business models like carbon farming and promote technological developments such as for new genomic techniques are key parts of Commission's nature package. All proposals are interlinked and actually strengthen each other. They all contribute and assist to achieve the goals of the other proposals on the table with nature restoration law in the center. The move we do on nature the more we do on nature, the less tough we will have to be on climate action. Nature is our best ally in fighting climate change. And if we don't take proper measures to let it thrive, we will be ditching our best chance to achieve climate neutrality. Honorable members, citizens, businesses, scientists, farmers, foresters, cities, our international partners, they all expect us to act to address the climate-related challenges they face, which are aggravated by bad and deteriorating state of our natural ecosystems. This very parliament, in June 2021, called for a strong nature restoration law, including binding targets. And together with the Council, the Parliament and Commission signed a declaration only six months ago on 22nd of December 2022, confirming that nature restoration was a joint priority for 2023. Today, I am reconfirming to this House that Commission remains 100% committed to turn this proposal into law, to showing the necessary flexibility and to supporting the co-legislators in their search for compromise. The Council has already engaged in this process, and I'm convinced that with a constructive approach, a compromise is possible also within this House. In order to uphold the European Union's international commitments under both Paris Agreement and the Kuming Montreal Biodiversity Framework to ensure a transition to sustainable economy and deliver on the EU climate law and adapt to climate change. We need to urgently restore and strengthen the resilience of natural ecosystems across the EU. And I know that many of you share this urgency, either for trust, that you will seize this opportunity and take responsibility to engage constructively so that tomorrow this House can adopt a mandate for trial of negotiations, which would also allow us to reach a final agreement on the proposal in time for COP28 and the next Biodiversity COP16, and to see the entry into force of the nature restoration law before the end of this political term. Dear colleagues, this is not about restoring nature for the sake of nature. It's about ensuring a habitable environment where the well-being of current and future generations is ensured, where the land and seas continue having the capacity to provide us the goods and services that our lives, our economy fully depend on. It is about our lives. It's about us and those who come after us. Thank you.
Herzlichen, herzlichen. Thank you very much. Moving on now to speakers on behalf of the groups, I'll start with Ms. Christina Schneider. Herr President, on these false accusations, I'd like to clarify this. Uh, we, as the EPP, stand by the objectives of the Green, European Green Deal. We want the Montreal Biodiversity Protocol to apply across the world. But we don't agree on the path to take. There are very different ideas about how to reach this. The proposal from the Commission is going in the wrong direction. Protecting biodiversity can only go hand in hand with the population, not by foisting rules on the foresters, the farmers, etc., making them responsible for the disappearance of biodiversity, nor by removing arable farmland from production and endangering food production, nor pitting the environment against agricultural production. To date, the Commission hasn't come up with full and complete data on what this would involve, even though we've heard promises, nor on financing measures, nor the ramifications on the member states. This remains a question mark. It's completely unclear how the nature restoration law would work in sync with the existing 23 regulations that are already in force that are already meant to protect our environment. You might get the impression that the Commission has taken the wrong path and gone awry. A poorly present, put, put together proposal has meant that the Commission has wasted valuable time. You don't get support by trying to exert pressure on individual members of Parliament. Through this behaviour, Vice President Timmermans has split this Parliament. Three committees have taken the proposal from the Commission and rejected it. And tomorrow, it will nevertheless come to, down to the wire in a vote in Parliament. Hence, to conclude, let me underscore once again, we as the EPP stand by the Green Deal. But this proposed law is poorly drafted, and it is our duty as Members of Parliament to call this out. And we intend to vote against. We haven't changed our demand. Come up with a new, better proposal. Take a new path that will enjoy a broad-ranging majority. Thank you. I'd now like to give the floor to the chair of the group of the Progressive Alliance and Socialists and Democrats. Thank you, President. Environmental protection is going through a crucial moment now in the EU. This attempt led by the EPP to reject the Nature Restoration Bill is sending out a terrifying message about the feasibility of the Green Deal. What the right has done is to see uh, the environment as being a key area for it to take on the far right. Mr Weber didn't even have the decency to be here in the chamber and show his face, but I'm going to use this podium nonetheless to send him a message. Mr Weber, Mr Weber, you're grubbing for votes in a fake defence of farmers and rural environments. You've used a strategy of lies, denying scientific facts and rubbing shoulders with deniers. But it's not only about climate change denial, uh, we've seen record high average temperatures, 60,000 people dying from high temperatures in 2022 in Europe, a million species now endangered, over 80% of habitats are in a poor state, and although 3,500 scientists and large companies support this, the EPP has decided to declare war on nature restoration, on this law which is vital in order to repair damage, vital to ensuring food security, necessary to ensure that businesses can operate, essential in order to combat the ever more severe impact of climate change, in short, a law which is vital to ensuring that the planet 
will be inhabitable by the people of today and tomorrow. Mr Weber is flying in the face of conservative governments who supported this idea in council. But he's not only taking on his own comrades, but he's losing historical uh, memory. The far right in Hungary, Poland, Italy, Finland, Spain have a reactionary program. And uh, the EPP is moving closer to Vox, attacking LGBTQI, attacking women. Uh, now attacking attempts to combat climate change. The EPP, the, the People's Party and Vox are deniers robbing future generations of their future. The people of the future, Europeans of the future, deserve a decent Green Deal without sacrificing what has been achieved uh, socially. A Europe that protects, that progresses, that moves forward. That's what we want. Someone to move backwards. They want hate. They want destruction. But Social Democrats are clear about what our destiny is. Less inequality, more rights. Move forward or backwards? Which is it to be? For us, it's very clear. Forwards. Thank you, colleague. Thank you very much. Now, on behalf of the Renew Europe group, the chair of the group, Mr. Stéphane Sejourné. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, President, colleagues. So. Here we are. After weeks of debate and one-upmanship, we're called upon to vote on the Nature Restoration Act. Personally, I believe in an ambitious law. My group believes in a text that can bring together all those who care about the environment, all those who've supported the Green Deal from the outset. But let's face it, the debate has got out of hand, both in form and content. It's gone awry. It's a huge mess. And we know who will be to blame if the text is rejected. On the one hand, a European commissioner. Mr Timmermans, unfortunately not uh, uh, here, adamant in the media, but someone needs to explain to me how you build a majority from inside your office in Brussels. In terms of the strategy in relation to this law, there's a whole series of other political texts that the Commission has presented on the Green Deal. There's been so much fake news about this proposed legislation. How many misunderstandings would we have avoided if the Commission had had an overall strategy on the Green Deal text? And, on the other hand, as earlier speakers have said, the Conservative group happy to show that an alliance between the right and climate uh, sceptics is possible. The reality, Mr Weber, is that you don't want this text, whatever the amendments, perhaps purely for partisan political reasons. Now, it's 37 degrees today in Strasbourg. I can assure you that, uh, those of you in the EPP, that your partisan objectives will not be audible to future generations, to our children. So we have uh, a lack of strategy from the Commission on one hand, partisan political one-upmanship on the other. That's where the responsibility lies for the current situation. At present, the text is in danger of being rejected. My group is still painfully trying to do the impossible. We've proposed amendments. All is not lost. We have 24 hours. Nature and biodiversity deserve this effort. The parliamentary group has been trying to show unity internally. I've been working for that and for the European Parliament more generally uh, now. Let's not create any more uh, precedents. The Green Deal has worked thanks to bridging our divides. We have bridged our uh, divides, but some groups are in the process of creating new ones. To me, nature and biodiversity have no political colours. Believe me, it is a short-term strategy they're following. Only the extremes will benefit from this parliamentary polarisation. Ladies and gentlemen, we will do our work. In the next 24 hours, we will be proposing a strategy to achieve a majority and to avoid rejection of the text. I call on all those who have uh, political responsibilities, those who've worked together with the 
the committee chairs with the rapporteurs and the shadow rapporteurs, all those who've worked on this strategy, please let us work together to ensure that this text can uh, get through. I call on everyone from right to left to shoulder their responsibilities. Let us ensure victory for this text. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is the co-chair of the Green Group, Terry Reinke. <coughs> Dear colleagues, our rivers are dying, our forests are sick, our nature is in deep crisis. We have to restore our nature, not in a distant future, not when EPP has gotten their act together. We have to act now for preserving nature, the basis of our agriculture, the basis of our economic prosperity, for keeping the climate targets, because 10% out of the 55% that we have agreed to reduce our emissions by 2030 are nature-based climate action for keeping our competitiveness to the self-declared business groups in this parliament. You heard the appeal by major companies like Unilever or IKEA to let the nature restoration law pass. So, dear EPP colleagues, many of your parties are actually based on Christian values, centered on the preservation of creation. Please follow your inner conviction and not what your group leader is telling you and vote tomorrow in favor of the nature restoration law. Dear Renew colleagues, the nature restoration law is about freedom. The destruction of biodiversity already today is limiting our options and it's going to get worse in the future. Preserve our freedom and vote in favor of the nature restoration law tomorrow. But colleagues, we also all know that this law has become much more than just itself in the past month. It has become a symbol, a symbol of the Green Deal, a symbol of constructive decision making in this parliament. And it has unfortunately become a symbol of political games within the EPP on which strategy they want to go for for 2024. And Mr. Weber, who is unfortunately not here right now, we can clearly see what your strategy is. Going against your own commission president. All of this to me is a sign of a deep identity crisis within EPP, a shift in decision making here in this parliament. And for me, a very dangerous development, especially as far right uh, parties and groups and movements are gaining ground across Europe. Colleagues, let us vote tomorrow in favor of the nature restoration law to show that constructive decision making in this parliament is still possible, to show that we stand behind the Green Deal and yes, also to restore and protect our nature. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For the ECR, Alexander Vondra has the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, Viktor Orban supported this in council. I say that to the left. This proposal is not a good one. It's contradictory. Yes, it's good for uh, the birds that are disappearing, it's good for the water, but it's very it makes life very difficult for farmers and it brutally infringes upon the prerogatives of member states and it generates a cost burden. In, in uh, council, some of the problems were eliminated. Thank goodness, for example, the power given to the NGOs. But the Commission, France, France, where are you? Decarbonisation on a global level isn't bringing us anything. Uh, China is riding a wave, it's still hot everywhere and our own situation is getting worse. We have a, a divided house now and we only have ourselves to blame. For the ID group, we're going to hear from Aurelia Beigneux. Thank you, Mr. President. Rapporteur, the European Commission and uh, the Uh, left have come up with an absolutely crazy idea which is bad for farmers and bad for the member states. There were members who wanted an impact uh, analysis who were threatened. 
by the uh, commissioner responsible for the Green Deal. This is scandalous and anti-democratic. We have an imminent food crisis, and you still have these utopian pipe dreams. You're sacrificing our farmers on the altar of your ideology. Why do you want to meddle with the urban uh, policy of our member states? It's up to the member states to decide how they organize their towns and cities, and certainly not a commission that thinks it has exclusive power over all policy areas. Forests are also national business. The European Commission, therefore, has no legitimacy in this respect. This uh, text was rejected in three committees, and the uh, left are now, uh, uh, in an undemocratic way, uh, bringing the matter uh, back uh, to plenary with amendments. Thank you, Mr. Confound, for your very uh, useful comments there. The rejection of this text must be definitive in order to send a clear message to the European Commission. And to the left, I say yes uh, to the uh, preservation of nature and farmland, but no to this absurd and oppressive proposal from the European Commission. It's about time that you stopped hurting our farmers, stop damaging the interests of our uh, member states in the interest of your lobbies and on the basis of your ideology. Thank you. Manon Aubry now for the left. Chers collègues. Ladies and gentlemen, last week was the hottest week for 120,000 years. 80% of soil and waters have been devastated by the crazy exploitation of uh, the uh, planet. A quarter of birds have disappeared. Nature restoration should enjoy majority here, because nature can't thrive on a dead planet, but the right and the extreme white are trying to take this law and turn it into a, tot uh, uh, a whole ethic on how to approach this. What about science? What about what is going on outside rolling the red carpet out for climate uh, deniers? We can see that there are all sorts of uh, ramifications that this will have, like upending the whole environmental policies of the EU. What about people trying to save the planet? Well, Mr. Sejourné, we heard from Mr. Macron talking about the environment. He basically uh, started the ball rolling of this whole situation and it is the voting behaviour of your members who allowed it to be rejected in the Environment Committee. Any vote against will bring us closer to the abyss. Let's not forget what's going on with the young people and young protesters, because history will catch you up. It's only the 10th of uh, July. It's 37 degrees out, so let's vote in favour of the Nature Restoration Law. And now representing the non-attached, Maria Angela Danzi. Presidente, Commissario. President, Commissioner, today I feel, and we all should feel, a great responsibility. The last flooding in Emilia-Romagna caused 15 deaths and 9 billion euro damage. I can still see before me the floods in at Genoa, when I was Director General. Those who've lived through such experiences have felt today, as they did then, a great sense of impotence and inadequacy for not having been able to prevent the effects of such disasters. We must not give up. Scientists, associations and millions of citizens are asking us to take action. Climate change is not an inescapable process. Restoring degraded land and protecting biodiversity are the tools. We're not impervious to economic arguments, but we must keep a distance from the pressures of special interests. And today, we can reverse course. President, I would like to make an appeal to my EPP and Renew colleagues. Do not follow the far right and climate change deniers. 
vote for this measure. It is an investment to secure the future of our children. The Five Star Movement will therefore vote in favour of this measure and support it with great conviction. Thank you. Peter Lisa has asked for the floor. Begen. Colleagues, I come from a rural area and the people in my region have a completely different view from those in the Brussels bubble, more, than, more different than ever. I have uh, spoken to mayors and to farmers, and in Germany they are clearly against this law. I've spoken to the uh, operators of hydropower stations. They are worried about this legislation because it's going to make it difficult for hydropower stations. Other uh, projects are going to, other projects which are part of the energy transition are going to be made more difficult by this proposal. Why are uh, why is there a divide in the German uh, Greens at, at the moment? Because there are those who are in favour of the energy transition and those who are in favour of every last bird species. Unfortunately, now we have climate change, we have to fight it together. We can't pretend that we're in the situation we were in 70 years ago. Many definitions are unclear. Uh, it's a pig in a poke, this piece of text. I think we should listen to what the people are saying in the rural areas. We should listen to the people who are outside today. We should say nature restoration, yes we can. Nature restoration law, no we can't. Let's vote against this proposal. The blue card. Michael. Michael Bloss. Peter Liese. Peter Liese, you voted in favour of the uh, climate law. You voted in favour of Lulu CF. 10% of the uh, uh, climate objective comes through nature. How do you want to achieve that if you vote against this law? If you vote against this law, you vote against climate protection, you vote against the Green Deal, against the von der Leyen project. That's not going to help us uh, meet the climate objectives. Thank you, lieber Michael. Thank you, Michael. I'm very happy to answer this uh, question. I'd remind everybody that it was Michael Bloss on behalf of the Greens together with ID and the ECR groups that were uh, in favour of uh, ditching ETS2. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. We believe in cooperation. We voted for Lulu CF, yes. 310 uh, million tonnes of additional sinks. That was the EPP position. We want incentives. We don't want the coercive measures that are proposed here. Colleagues. We have many people wanting to speak. That's understandable. The issue is important. I think, therefore, uh, given how many speakers there are, we don't uh, have too many blue card uh, interventions. I can only take one at a time. But we have such a long speakers list with all the opinions represented. Let's uh, make sure that everyone on the speakers list can be taken. So a maximum of one blue card per speaker and then only when it's absolutely necessary. This is already a very emotive and important subject. The next speaker is Mohamed Shahim. President. Oh, thank you.
President, nature restoration is all well and good because nature is our future, about healthy soils and where we can produce sustainable food for the future. And we have seen problems of climate change. But unfortunately, we've seen this legislation hijacked by political interests. We've seen that the EPP uh, is not looking at the content, and the proof of this is that the chair and the vice chair of that group are holding a press conference at the same time that this debate is going on. It's scandalous that this is happening. Because don't, don't be mistaken, this nature restoration law is just as important for biodiversity, for the crisis in biodiversity, as the climate uh, agreement was as well. Climate and biodiversity are two sides of the same coin. So we can see the EPP picking up cudgels against this as a political uh, approach. And that's what happens when you drive a wedge like this. In, we've seen this in the Netherlands. It's been going on for a long time, polarization of views and false dichotomies. And this is happening in Europe as well now. The CDA and a number of other parties are trying to get votes, but they're basically chasing votes by moving to the right. And what's the cost of this? The cost is our nature, our future, and that's cynical politics. That's politics that you should be ashamed of. Because it's very simple what we should be voting here. Do we want to leave the world better uh, than the state we inherited it in? So I think it's very straightforward. I hope that tomorrow we'll be all voting in favour of this to make progress go forward. Adelante. On board is Frau Soraya Maria Rodriguez Ramos. Next, uh, it's Ms. Rodriguez Ramos. Fuera de esta cámara. Thank you, President. Outside this chamber, the Nature Restoration Bill uh, at law uh, reads with a lot of support. The scientific community, large companies, in renewable energy companies, the people of Europe, especially the young people of Europe, the Committee of the Regions, mayors, uh, presidents of regions, council, majority in council. That's what's happening outside the chamber. So the problem is here. The problem is inside this chamber. We're talking about 80% of our ecosystems being in a deplorable state and requiring restoration. And the fact that they don't have any arguments is uh, plain uh, before us. Weber's not here. Tomorrow, we need to ensure that this law has a mandate to enter trilogues. Our growth depends on it. Not only does this law not... Uh, prevents uh, development. What it does is make our model more sustainable in terms of ecosystems. It doesn't undermine food security. 70% of agricultural soils in Europe are undergoing continuous erosion. And what this law does is not only help ecosystems and uh, habitats, it also affects citizens' rights. Today, and tomorrow, I've heard people say, we need more scientific evidence before we act. Well, I'm sorry, we've got plenty of it. We've got plenty of scientific evidence. What we're lacking is political courage. Ms. Aubry, don't pursue the wrong enemy. Tomorrow, my group, Renew, will have a firm commitment to ensuring that this law can move forward. Thank you. Jutta Paulus is next. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. President, Commissioner, colleagues. It, Europe's nature is suffering. 80% of ecosystems are in a poor state. 1,500 species on the red list and uh, bird populations are falling. I'm old enough to uh, know what it was like when the sky was full of skylarks. The Commission and the constructive groups in this parliament have come up with a law to relieve the pressure on nature, to allow room for pollinators, to safeguard diversity, which protects us from the rapid climate change that we're facing. Without healthy ecosystems, we cannot do climate protection. We need healthy forests. We need carbon sinks. We need to revitalize our 
uh, ecosystems for the purposes of climate adaptation. We've seen what happens when uh, rivers burst their banks. This should be a lesson to us. And right now, cities are climate change hotspots, and that's why we need this law in order to protect citizens from uh, these changes and these threats. There's another possibility. You can say, oh, there's, uh, there's no problem. Um, the trouble is, if you don't have uh, uh, water and you don't have oxygen, then the fact that you can drive your car around doesn't really give you much. The EPP is talking about villages being demolished and uh, hydropower stations being dismantled. That's not in the text. And this idea to, uh, of restoring everything to how it was 70 years ago is nonsense. It's not in the text. It's pure uh, populism. We need uh, uh, long-term uh, food security. Stop, uh, Mr. Weber, stop uh, campaigning at the expense of, uh, of the, the citizens and uh, our safety. We need to do this for future generations, and tomorrow it's decision time. Um, what is Bert Jan Reusen has the floor. Thank you, President, Commissioner. In Marienheim, a village in the east of our country, there's a, a big problem. There's a busy, dangerous road that goes straight through the village. Now, the bypass that would relieve that village uh, traffic won't be coming anytime soon. Now, an important reason for this, alongside the shortage of funds, is the suffocating nature 2000 legislation, which even makes road safety subordinate to nature. President, if we're to vote in favour of the nature restoration law tomorrow, we will be generating comparable situations all over Europe as a result. Uh, rural areas will simply have to shut up shop. The rule of primacy, that nature always comes first, will then apply to many other areas outside Natura 2000 areas. And then the proposal doesn't take population density into account at all, and that makes things all the more complicated. Nature is important, but the Commission's approach is simply not good enough. Let us support grassroots initiatives. Let's give the regions enough flexibility to be able to take their own responsible decisions. More meddling from Brussels is not going to help. The amendment to reject merits all your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schill Le Breton. Chers collègues, le pacte vert or... Colleagues, the European Green Deal is uh, amazing with all its unrealistic and dangerous legislation. Following the Industrial Emissions Directive uh, revision, now we have uh, all the farmers being attacked by the Commission with its uh, nature restoration law. Generations of farmers before us have worked at this uh, land, preserved it, and transmitted it to future generations. It's crazy to restore ecosystems by uh, 2050. This would be a disaster for our uh, future. The plans for uh, rivers would be uh, fatal. Every member state should decide for itself. This text has been rejected three times, so a clear message has been sent by this parliament. Stop these crazy environmental plans which are destroying our uh, agriculture. All we're doing is creating even more pollution with your plans. Mr. Pito. Mr. Le Breton, je parle en français, donc vous pouvez répondre. Mr. Le Breton, you can stay where you are. I'm going to speak uh, French. Monsieur Le Breton, vous le savez. Mr. Le Breton, I'm a farmer. You know that. What threatens food sovereignty? What threatens uh, farming and farmers' revenue 
is not more nature, it's not uh, the climate balance, it's using more pesticides, it's using uh, more artificial fertilizers. That's what's bad for food sovereignty and the future of farmers. So, Mr. Le Breton, it's perfectly possible to have biodiversity and farming. Question? What is your question? Cher Monsieur Bito, je n'ai jamais dit qu'il fallait davantage. I never said we need more pesticides. I agree that there can be measures which take into account environmental concerns. We should be looking at polluting industry. We should look at the countries uh, that have replaced nuclear with coal. Once we've done that, we can talk about farming. Merci, Mr. Mick Wallace. The floor is yours. Firstly, thanks to the Cesarean staff for their great work on the legislation. The threat of global biodiversity collapse is real. The scientific consensus is that if we do not take dramatic action within the next decade, we may face irreversible damage to the natural world and the collapse of our societies. The, silence, the science is absolutely clear. The biggest threat to our food security, to the future of agriculture, to the very persistence of humanity are the climate and biodiversity crises. The Nature Restoration Law can help to address both. Last week in Piemonte in Italia, there was unprecedented damage to grapevines and hazelnuts. In some cases, total crops were wiped out by hazelnuts bigger than golf balls, and it was 30 degrees. The Nature Restoration Law is not perfect. It will not radically alter our utterly broken economic system, which depends on perpetual extraction of finite resources to fuel infinite expansion. And unfortunately, any Parliament text we end up with after the vote this week is likely to be quite a bit weaker than the Commission's proposal. It won't be ideal, but I am hopeful that after negotiations with the Council, we will have a legal framework that is workable and that sufficiently addresses the biodiversity crisis. Our future depends on it. The nature restoration law is an existential necessity. Thank you. The floor is yours. Mr. President, dear colleagues, this is the NEM, the nth um, Green Deal proposal here in the hemicycle. None of them have been as divisive as the one we have in front of us on nature restoration. Everybody in this hemicycle accepts the importance of restoring nature, but we must say this. The current proposal in its current form is impracticable. The European Commission and the left uh, and their uh, proposals put the livelihood of farmers at risk and can reduce food production by 30% in Europe. Obviously, the food prices are going to rise, farms will go bust, and we will become dependent of third countries. Mr. Commissioner, it is very sad and unacceptable that Brussels uh, has not come forward with a proposal for a fund that would help uh, uh, farmers instead of intimidation and backdoor deals, we should come back to the negotiating table. Herr Gabriel Mato, the floor is yours. Gracias, Presidente. Querido Comisario. Thank you, President. Commissioner, the farming and fisheries sector are crying out for help. If you go out of the chamber, you can hear their voices. Listen. They feel they've been abandoned. Stop disproportionate legislation that runs counter to their interests, that puts their way of life and food security in danger. Farmers and fishers feel persecuted. They're being blamed for climate change, while the Commission ignores significant evident, uh, uh, efforts which they've made to reduce CO2 emissions. So it's a yes to a nature restoration law. It's a laudable objective, but it shouldn't be done this way. We face these global challenges, and this legislation is being uh, now absent. We'll find it very difficult to explain to farmers in Castilla Leon and the rest of Spain why she's turning her back on them. Yes, we have to support the environment, but we need to support the economy and society. 
farmers and fishermen are equally vulnerable. Commissioner, you cannot restore nature without farmers. You cannot restore nature against farmers, against the interests of farmers. So withdraw this law and put forward a law which does combine environmental protection with the production of quality food for all citizens. Thank you. Frau Maria Neuchke, Sie sind am Wort. Maria Neuchel has the floor. Colleagues, I want to speak as a member of the Agriculture Committee. There are two uh, demonstrations outside. They want to create a situation that it's farmers versus non-farmers, but it's not farmers versus non-farmers. It's about power and the idea of uh, teaming up with the far right to stay in power versus the future. On the one hand, you have the EPP, the Eurosceptics, and the extreme right. They would get rid of nature rather than uh, losing power. So to those who've really switched their brains on, uh, please, uh, stay with science, stay with the f future, stay with the future generations. This is not about farmers versus non-farmers. This is about common sense against power. Now, Mr. Pascal Confin. Colleague, Monsieur le Commissaire. Colleagues, Commissioner, this week we have a twofold responsibility which is a grave one. Firstly, save nature. And if I could turn to my colleagues on the right and the centre right. If you don't want to listen to the unanimous view of scientists that this law deserves being, defense, being defended, listen to hunters. Hunters are in favour of this law. Their association is. Listen to the Agri-Food Association. They're in favour of this law because they know that the main threat to effective food production is, uh, the, is endangered species and uh, endangered pollinizers. Our economy depends on services that come from nature. So listen to the economic forecasts too. The second part of our responsibility is that we have to stand up against the far right. And not, the EPP should not get into bed with the far right. That's killing European democracy. It's killing the spirit of compromise, which has been there since the beginning of the Green Deal. Don't let far right populism and fake news in. We've seen these lies around for a year now, and you've fallen for them, hook, line and sinker, and passed them on in this chamber. So save nature and stand up uh, against uh, the far right. If we come together, I believe we can prevail. Mr Buda, you are on the speaker's list, hence I will not be taking your blue card question and I'll give the floor to Mr Bass Eichhout. Chair, making nature healthy again is key and an ally in the fight against climate change and disease outbreaks. It is at the heart of our European Green Deal. I'm quoting Ursula von der Leyen. The EU nature restoration law is a generation's opportunity to take concrete and effective action. More than 100 companies making that statement last week, uh, making clear how important this nature restoration law is. Were there concerns? Did we do negotiations? Yes, there were concerns. Some cities had their concerns. But now EuroCities, representing a huge bunch of cities in Europe, is tweeting, we need the nature restoration law. Is this against farmers? No, the caring farmers are making very clear. We need the nature restoration law. So EPP, what happened? You walk away from the negotiation table. You tweet about Santa Claus. It's all very funny, but let's get back to reality. Let's take this vote, and it's finally time you support nature restoration and this law. Thank you. Thank you. Frau Anna Zalewska. Ms. Anna Zalewska. 
Panie Przewodniczący, Panie Komisarz. It attacks nature and attacks people. If something is impossible, impracticable, uh, then you get the opposite effect to what you wanted. This is a bad regulation. It interferes with privacy and property. We're not going to reduce the temperature in Strasbourg if we take land away from farmers. Farmers, foresters and fishers love nature uh, at least as much as those who pretend to care for nature. This is a bad regulation because it hands too many powers to the European Commission, which is going to be monitoring, reporting and uh, taking decisions itself. So uh, on the one hand, uh, uh, things are uh, prohibited, and then uh, more things are prohibited. I think you should all go and see some farmers to find out how to really care for nature. Now, Ms. Sylvia Lima has the floor. The Natur Wiederherstellung. The nature restoration regulation is nothing more than a huge expropriation and destruction program. Formerly, there were 15 million farms. There are 2,400, that's and 3.6 million are left. And it's your, that's not even taking into account your huge missold nature laws. Let's not forget, there's food that has to be flown halfway around the world before we get it on our plates. We need to support domestic farmers by keeping arable land, not by getting rid of it. And you're well aware of this, but instead of looking at objective arguments, you'd rather say, oh, it's the EPP. Oh, you need to... Um, you've been adopting the AFD right-wing ideology. But... This green-red ideology doesn't just show your lack of ideas, but is quite simply politically anti-democratic and shameful. Mordik. Mr. Ms. Sylvia Mordik is the next speaker. Arvoisa puhemies. Mr. President, the scientific community has been saying for uh, years uh, that... Uh, uh, the threat to, to biodiversity and uh, climate change are linked, and we have to deal with both. Nature, if it is uh, healthy, could help us, but at the moment it is not. What's happening now is uh, an extraordinary level of uh, a species extinction, including uh, pollinators. We're seeing the... Uh, scientific community saying that uh, the loss of nature is a threat to food supply and farmers. The biodiversity strategy will be just empty words without this uh, uh, law. We have to stop the loss of nature. Nature deserves better than this uh, uh, short-sighted uh, politicking. Thank you very much. The next speaker... I can't see him actually, so I'll give the floor now to Herbert Dorfmann instead. Thank you, Herr Kommissar. Thank you, President, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. I think when we're looking at making new legislation in this House, we need to ask ourselves whether it's going to respect subsidiarity and bring added value. And for this nature restoration law, the answer is clearly no. The local authorities are responsible for being stewards of the land and by bringing in these sort of bans, we are abusing that power. I don't think Brussels knows better than individual local authorities uh, on what is sensible or not. And of course, when it comes to agriculture, we can't blame them for the destruction of nature. 10% of production needs to be withdrawn. 
food security is something that the Commission is saying is not going to be affected. Well, if the other 90% were, were to be more efficient, it would be. But is this really something that makes sense? Is, does it make sense to uh, try and produce more sustainably across the board in agriculture? But that's what we have the CAP for, the Common Agricultural Policy. We're spending billions each year on this. We're going to endanger this if we're going to start introducing these new legal standards. Of course, there's a question of property law as well. That's being abused here. This should be sent back to the Commission. Thank you. Herr Dorfmann. Mr. Dorfmann. Madame Grappini. Frau Grappini. Uh, I think you need to put your uh, headphones on. Okay. Sunt convinsă că și dumneavoastră I believe that you and all of us here want to protect nature. You said that the commission proposal brings no added value. I know that you're very familiar with agriculture. Could you say if uh, farmers are uh, going to uh, get a, a, a better life and nature is going to be better off, what would we need to do? Well, thank you very much. During the course of this long debate on the common agricultural policy, I've certainly been very committed to the CAP having aspects of sustainability inherent in it, that we have eco schemes, that we have eco uh, agricultural schemes, um, about a third of our total expenditure for CAP is, is being spent on more sustainability. And I think that is an efficient path that we need to continue to tread in the current reform and future reforms. That will give farmers more possibilities and help nature better. Thank you very much. To Mr. Madison, he, was, and he, he asked for a blue card. I will say you are on the speaker's list, so it is un Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Redrag Fred Matic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Although I have been involved in politics for a long time, I cannot accept the fact that to some colleagues the upcoming elections and votes are more important than the future of our children. I cannot understand the breakneck move of the right parties which up until a few months ago couldn't stop talking about the importance of balancing sustainable development policies and the fisheries. And I'm stressing for the hundredth time no one wants to take the livelihood from the fishermen or force them to moor their vessels and change their profession. Quite the contrary. Nature restoration is not a wish, it is a dire necessity. This regulation offers enough time to member states to prepare the national restoration plans and start adopting adequate measures, and only in those areas which need it most. So let me say to all the manipulators out there, Article 5, Para 1 is going strongly against you. And to conclude, vote against the nature restoration is a vote against common sense, against food security, against preservation of natural beauties and against the survival of European fishermen and at the same time it is the most primitive form of selfishness and political scheming. Floor is yours. Ms. Torvalds. <coughs> Dear pres uh, President, before I start I just remind you that you let Commissioner Sikevicius go over the time with 7 minutes and 24 seconds. So please give us a chance in the same spirit. I don't like emotional debates, and this debate has been very emotional. And therefore, we don't see the facts as they are. In all cases of shared competence, the Commission is forced, according to uh, Articles 4 and 5 of the, of the treaty to show that the, the problem is better solved on EU level than on member, membership level, member state level. That leads by the logics of things to a one size fits all. And that's the very problem 
of this proposal. The nature in Finland is not being killed in 80%, as has been stated here. The nature in, in the Dutch, in, in the Netherlands, is probably being killed because you have per square kilometer 500 Dutch persons. In Finland, we have probably 17. So you have different circumstances in different member states. And therefore, this is not taken into account in this proposal. And that's creating the immense problems we have. And we're going to have a very hard debate in the Renew. It's not easy to be the king maker. And therefore, the rest of the seven minutes I leave to the next speaker. Thank you. Mr. Dovolz, do you accept the blue card from Mr. Lambert? Yeah, Mr. Torvalds, you know I respect you a lot. Uh, you mentioned uh, Finland. The nature of Finland is not being destroyed. The entire climate strategy... No, no, but... Oh, okay. What you mean is that basically Finland does not have the same problem as the Netherlands. I agree. It's a different country. But the entire climate strategy of your country is predicated on your forest absorbing 20 million tons of carbon every year. And the way they are exploited today makes that they emit carbon instead of absorbing it. You have to solve this. Well, the good colleague from Belgium has the wrong information about Finnish forest. Because there was a report that the Finnish forest is emitting more. Then that was controlled several times and showed that this is not the case. So when you start to debate Finnish forest with me, you better stay by the facts. Thank you. Uh, Madame Marie Tussaud. Chers collègues, nous vivons l'effondrement. Colleagues, we are losing biodiversity. We know the problems with uh, the climate change. Hence, the nature restoration law is crucial and must be adopted. Every member of this parliament has uh, uh, their say on the future of humanity. We're seeing uh, the degradation of soil. We're seeing forests burning. We're seeing uh, lives uh, being lost. It is uh, vital, therefore, to uh, adopt this law, which you on the right and the hard right want to destroy. What are you going to tell your uh, children? That we sacrificed nature in order to unite the European right? That is irresponsible and criminal. So to the colleagues on the right, I say, please uh, uh, disregard what your leaders are saying and vote in favor of this law. Speaker is Madame de la Pisa Carillon. Presidente, gracias. Thank you. President, colleagues, the European Commission is showing that it has no scruples about imposing its will on Europeans and uh, destroying our primary sector, using a supposed environmental concern as an excuse. The so-called nature restoration law says it's about restoration, but actually it's threatening a significant proportion of our arable land, which has already been severely curtailed by previous legislation. Our arable and livestock farmers with their millennial experience and vital uh, know-how are being chased off the land because of this green excuse. The forest fires in Spain are because the law prevents forest cleaning. Dams and reservoirs are destroyed when we need water in a drought. We're not going to allow you to risk our ability to feed ourselves and take us to the brink. What we need is strong governments that bring some common sense back to our policies rather than... Uh, indulging in climate fanaticism. Thank you very much, Mr. Anders Vistesen. In the debate we're having here, it seems that the right is being pitted against the left. It's a question of the crisis of biodiversity. How can we come to this state of Play. Well, common agriculture policy, common fisheries policies, 
These are now in the purview of the EU. When you're blaming the, for the farmers and the fishers for the state of nature, well, they're the ones who are having to assume the rules that you have been producing. I think it's more the Commission that's responsible for the state of nature. And now to give the, the Court of Justice a blank check so that they can uh, ag aggregate more powers unto themselves is uh, ridiculous. In local authorities, in towns and, and villages, but those of us who live in rural areas as well, we're the ones who can save nature, not in Strasbourg or in uh, Brussels. Flanagan, look. Ming Flanagan's the next speaker. This to work for all our futures. For that to happen, we need to be honest with farmers on what they will have to do. If it is going to cause a problem, then we have to admit it. In the case of re-establishing habitats, Article 4, Paragraph 2, depending on how a member state interprets it, farmers could be prevented from farming their land. That's not scaremongering, that's my honest interpretation. I have tabled two amendments in order to guarantee that when and if this regulation comes into effect, that those farmers who farm in an extensive, sustainable way are protected. Between now and when the trilogues are concluded, this must be dealt with. Thanks to the rapporteur, rapporteur for your email on this, and I'll be talking to you. We also need to fund this. We've been told by the WWF that the regulation will create 1.8 trillion in public funds. Yet we can't find any new public money. In Switzerland, they found the money. In Switzerland, Switzerland, there's very little controversy because farmers are taken care of. To financially match what Switzerland gives to farmers for nature, the EU would only need a mere 0.4 trillion every six years, cheap in comparison to 1.8 trillion Thank you very in benefits. Much. Thank you very much. Unser nächster Redner ist the next speaker is Mr. Jörg Meuthen. Herr Präsident, werte Kollegen. Mr. President, colleagues, we're talking today about the nature restoration law. What the Commission's proposed seems okay. You can't be against nature. But look at the detail of the text. And then, as so often, you see that it's well-presented ideological nonsense. It's about 20% uh, of our territory being turned into wilderness, despite having been used for farming. This is far removed from reality and highly dangerous. It's a danger to our uh, farming. It's a danger to our food security. In future, we need affordable fruit and vegetables, regional products on our tables, we shouldn't be creating obstacles for our farmers. In the interest of uh, farming and nature protection, we should vote against this text on Wednesday. Fiat. Ms. Jeske, Paul Fiat, you have the floor. Thank you, President. Less than a year left in our term of office, so it's good that this week we're having a debate and are to vote on the nature restoration law. It's very clear which interests are being represented for our population, our electorate. Obviously, if something isn't up to the mark, we need to rework it. We're not saying that it's either this or an ecological collapse. That's not true. And these sort of arguments aren't helping anybody, not least the climate and the environment. We want to strengthen biodiversity, but we need to have objectives that are realistic and that are feasible. And I don't think that's something can be said of this proposal. The collected left wing have said that they're not interested in trying to get everybody on board on this journey towards a sustainable society. Instead, they want to have a debate where they can denigrate those people who don't think as they do. And I don't think it's worthy of this parliament nor the um, European environmental work that is so important. 
also you're ignoring those people who are to administer and be stewards of uh, the land. They're the ones who we're dependent of. The moderates and the EPP will also put people at the centre of our policies. And our, we in our political group believe that the farmers are part of the solution, not part of the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Frau Kollegin. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Helene Fritzorn. Thank you, President. Thank you, President, Commissioner. As with many Swedes, I have a deep and close relationship with nature, from our high mountains in the north to the Scanian plains with rapeseed in the south. Nature is our most important resource, and we have to look after it for our children and our grandchildren. We need to bolster nature. That's important for the green transition. And that's why it is a pillar of the European Green Deal, and that's why it's so important that we do work hard to produce legislation that will strengthen nature and at the same time promote an active Swedish agriculture and forestry policy. And unfortunately, the right-wing Conservatives have left the negotiating table and have abdicated responsibility for, for the future. Now is not the time that you want to do uh, as in Sweden, to shift to the right to stop the green transition. We are legislators. We stand up for compromises that will help Swedish nature for sustainable nature, environment and agriculture. Do you accept the blue card? Madame Skittital. Nature restoration. Yes, the Nature Restoration Law has praiseworthy objectives to strengthen biodiversity, and that's why I understand it sounds good to vote in favour of this proposal. But it's all too well the case that MEPs are more concerned about what sounds good rather than what actually is good. We are legislators. We're not political influencers. This proposal would have devastating consequences for the heartlands of Sweden and I think the Swedish Social Democrats should be more concerned with what farmers, f foresters and local authorities are doing here rather than trying to be uh, following political influences like Greta Thunberg. Well thank you Ms. Schütterdahl for that question. We are legislators that is why we have a responsible uh, responsibility to negotiate. I want to work for Swedish interests in the nature restoration law by negotiating on compromises. The most important progress here would be to increase flexibility in the legislation so that we can say that the member states' needs are being met and also the various needs in various regions. National restoration plans are absolutely essential for this legislation and that's how we protect viable agriculture and forestry in every single member state. Is Madame Elsie Kaitainen. Thank you Mr President. Commissioner, biodiversity is vital to life and so it should be strengthened. It's a great pity that the Commission has produced uh, an unrealistic uh, proposal for a nature restoration law, disregarding member states and failing to meet this objective. And the way the Commission has operated has also uh, not been appropriate. It's no surprise, therefore, that many members of this Parliament want to reject this proposal it is wrong to apply one size fits all. A country with 75% of its land as a forest with clean water resources should not be the country paying the most. And why should uh, private property rights be trampled on? Quite uh, uh, clearly, uh, we need to reject this proposal and uh, the Commission needs to come up with something better. Das Wort gebeten hat Herr Per Holmgren. Mr. Per Holmgren. Thank you very much, Herr Tolman. Thank you very much, President. It's getting quite hot here.
It's hot outside. It's going to be maybe 37, 38 degrees this afternoon. I don't know if there's a, something symbolic to be read into that, but if not this year, then next year we will see the one and a half degree increase that we'll f see for the first time. And that is really a signal about the fever that the earth is suffering. So when you want to have pain relief and reducing uh, the fever, then nature restoration is the best medicine. We have to have this nature restoration law in effect. As everyone here knows, for many in the Parliament, this discussion has been a political tug of war, whether the Conservative group wants to uh, accommodate the right wing that we've seen in both in Sweden and Finland. And that's why I'm very surprised to see how many in the Liberal group are choosing the right-wing side, for example, the Centre Party that is Liberal and Green when I was growing up, and today, at least this week, it seems to be neither nor. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Pedro Fiocci. Nature Restoration is stato bocciato in tre commissioni. Nature Restoration was rejected by Agri, uh, Pesca and Envy. Going beyond Nature 2000, if you look at what has happened in Italy as a result of Nature, Nature 2000, we've seen drugs and prostitution <laughs> rushing into abandoned areas and violations of principles of privacy. We're also throwing subsidiarity and uh, member states' uh, sovereignty down the toilet to Commissioner uh, I would say that the 25 kilometres of free river, well, how is that going to be used for uh, renewable energy production? Is that going to be our hydroelectric uh, strategy? We need to look at agricultural production as well as uh, the uh, environment. We do want restoration of nature, but we should not become accomplices to the destruction of the rights of the citizens of Europe. And finally, a personal comment. If I had uh, carried out the environmental impact uh, study of the Commission, applying it to uh, the, the social and economic uh, dimensions when I was at school, I would have flunked uh, all of my... Uh, final uh, exams uh, go back and do better thank you very much the next speaker is Mr Madison one minute please stick to the time otherwise I'll have to interrupt, interrupt you thank you very much first of all I'm not sure how many people here have read this uh, regulation from beginning to end there's been a lot of emotive talk, people for, people against, people who want to, to save the planet. Uh, uh, I've read this uh, regulation many times, and I have a number of questions. It's said that this isn't going to hurt our farmers, and yet by 2030... Uh, peat extraction must uh, uh, stop on 30% of uh, peat bogs. Uh, now, peat is uh, a vital ingredient for farmers. How is that going to be compensated? By 2050, according to the regulation, half of peat areas have to be restored to bog. And who is going to compensate the foresters uh, for the fact that they're going to lose their uh, timber uh, as a result of the left uh, wanting their utopian uh, bogs. This is going to hurt farmers, it is going to uh, hurt uh, foresters, and I wonder who is going to pay for this. We are looking at society as a whole. You are thinking in terms of your uh, utopian dreams. Thank you. There's a blue card for you, Mr. Madison. Blue card. Prego, da parte di Pitikainen. 
Prego, onorevole Pitikainen. Pitikainen. To compensate, we all know that if we do not act both in the climate change and especially on biodiversity, the cost is going to be at least tenfold to our economies and farmers. I'm just asking who should compensate and out of which money we are going to compensate then the nature destruction. Well, that's a lot for a question. We all know that all the money has to be by the taxpayers. So it has to be from our own, of course, not from our pockets, because most of us just have to care about the money. But uh, the ordinary people has to pay higher price for the food. They have to buy a higher price for the traveling, the higher price uh, for the fuel, uh, for the traveling to the work in the morning. So it comes from the ordinary people, only because that we are believing that we can change the climate. There is no doubt that there is a climate change. The only question is that how can we really affect and are we really changing some way in the climate change if we are just saying to the food producers, no, you are our enemies. You shouldn't produce any meat anymore because you are just destroying the planet. That's the real problem. Thanks a lot. Thank you. One minute to Mr. Kolokusic. The nature restoration law, the title sounds really well and uh, who wouldn't agree? But the truth is that this is just another idiocy which we've seen so many times in this house. The only real objective of this law is to confiscate private property and uh, to take away land from farmers. The ultimate objective is to take away organic food from citizens. So citizens will not be able to eat normal food. This law should have been entitled uh, taking away food from the mouths of European citizens. In communism, there was a little dignity, so the laws on confiscation of private property were called laws on confiscation, and now you call them laws on restoring nature, on restoring the planet. But this is idiocy and bullshit. Thank you. One minute 30, Mr. Bernhuber. Dear Mr. President, dear Commissar, Madam President, Commissioner, we are now debating on the nature restoration law and tomorrow we're going to vote. But uh, reading the title and reading the individual points, they seem to be different things. This text should have been called something else. It could have been uh, called the abandonment of uh, forests and fields, or it, it could have been called farmers' expropriation law. You, if you want to protect nature, look at what farmers are doing. I'm a farmer in Austria, and I know how to farm my fields. And we saw the demonstrations outside, the tractors outside, the farmers outside. They're worried that they're not being heard. But I'm afraid... We're not going to be able to achieve uh, this by abandoning our fields, our farmland. There's a, a contradiction also in terms of energy. We want more renewable energy, and yet we're going to make it uh, impossible to build a new hydroelectric power station just because it's in a nature protection area. Commissioner, I think you have to take these concerns seriously. Everything we're deciding uh, here is already covered by 23 regulations. We don't need another one. We're in favor of nature protection, but this is not the way to do it. We need a better proposal. Thank you. There's a blue card for you, Mr. Ben Huber, but... The uh, blue card requester already is on the speaker's list, so I'm, I'm going to move straight on to Mr. Hoytema. No, my apologies. 
Ms. Burkhardt. Denton, I think. Thank you very much, Madam President. I think uh, many of us here want to look at the concerns uh, inherent in this proposal for nature restoration, but uh, we're looking at this being a question of whether we're going to reject it out of hand, that the European Parliament's the only institution that's blocking this, so refusing to go forward rather than finding solutions. It would be an important vote if it weren't just about nature restoration, but because it's also about whether majority of this House is going to support the right-wing course of Manfred Weber, looking at uh, leaving the nego negotiating table in the European Parliament, a fake news campaign that Mr Trump would be envious of. These are strategies we've seen in Italy, Spain and Sweden. They're forming alliances with the right, not to resolve issues, but to try and get posts, to try and gain an importance. We've heard from some of the EPP people who have been critical towards this, come back to the negotiating table and make sure that this law becomes reality. Thank you. Mr. Hoytema. Thank you very much, Thank you very much, President, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody's against nature. I grew up on a farm in the midst of nature. Biodiversity in Europe and in the rest of the world needs to be protected. So it's not a question of whether we're going to do it or not, but how we're to achieve this in the best way. The proposal from the European Commission on paper sounds fantastic, but in reality it would just slow things down necessarily, including on nature restoration. Countries such as the Netherlands are already shutting down. We're seeing that the Netherlands is being dragged into a morass and it's this proposal that's brought us there. Permits for building houses, for agricultural holdings and various other projects cannot be um, produced in time. With the national approach for nature restoration, what are the promises for the coming decades? Well, if this nature restoration law is adopted, these promises will not be able to be fulfilled. All the legislative proposals that I've looked at in my time in Parliament, this is the one that will have the biggest impact on people back home. This is a proposal that we cannot accept without looking at the negative ramifications, even if we're talking about nature restoration. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vreitz has the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. Madam President, Commissioner, This is the biggest wave of extinction since the end of the dinosaurs. Every hour we are losing three species. I have been seeing what the right have been uh, putting on Twitter about how this is all nonsense. It's, it's essential uh, to uh, protect uh, nature. It's not uh, crazy as you're trying to make out. It's very important to protect our nature, to protect our rivers. I really disagree with everything you say and the greening of our cities. We need it to prevent people, pr protect people from uh, heat waves. You're blocking the Green Deal. You're blocking the nature restoration law. You're a threat to our farmers. You're a threat to our food security. You're a threat to human life in cities. You're also threatening the future of our children and grandchildren. Listen to what business is saying. Listen to what the farmers are saying. And listen to the people who have the arguments in favor of the nature restoration law. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kuzmiuk has the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam President, Commissioner. We're all interested in the improvement of biodiversity, but the regulation is bad for farming, bad for forestry, bad for investment. As regards farming, well, environmental protection and biodiversity are in uh, the common agricultural policy and about a third of the CAP budget, uh, more than 100 billion euro, is allocated every seven years to that. We've also got the eco-schemes for plants and uh, animals in the CAP. Farmers are voluntarily 
doing all of this and they're getting money for it. And yet in this regulation we have coercion and not a euro given for uh, doing these things. Moreover, the Commission isn't saying where the money is to be come from, and the Commission is taking on powers which have no basis in the treaties. So the Polish delegation in the ECR will be voting against this regulation. Thank you. There's a blue card for you, Mr. Kuzmiuk. There is a blue card from you, for you from uh, Kiega. Je vais parler en français. Quand on vous écoute, ce n'est jamais. I'll speak French. Of course, we hear that it's never the right proposal. Uh, we should always wait. We should always uh, uh, change things. But let's trust the farmers as if everything were going well. Well, I have a question to put to you. When will it be the right time to take stronger steps? Will it be the time when actually things it's too late? Let me say again, we're all in favor of biodiversity, but these proposals are uh, obligatory, they're administrative and they're not funded. The Common Agricultural Policy, since the 1st of January of this year, takes the opposite approach. It gives incentives and it grants additional uh, funding to farmers to meet the objective. That is how we're going to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Conte has the floor now. Thank you, President, Commissioner. Rejected in fisheries, rejected in agriculture, rejected in environment. Fourth time lucky? No way, Jose. We're actually calling on plenary to ensure it isn't. Once again, hoping it will be the final time we aim to reject a regulation that harms productive activities while hiding behind the noble intention of defending nature. Less land for farmers, less sea for fishermen, less activity for businesses and fewer European products and jobs for our citizens. These but the heavy repercussions of the proposals contained in a regulation permeated with ideology and counterproductive to nature itself. It is not what we want, and more importantly, it's not what our citizens and the planet deserve. The European Commission should stop selling us out to third countries. After all, they're the only ones who benefit from this hypocritical environmentalism. Thank you. One minute now, Ms. Young, you see. No, sorry, I, I was uh, too quick there. It's such a lively debate. I missed a blue card request. Did I or not? No, we're not accepting the blue card request because it's someone who's already spoken. So I shall indeed give the floor to Mr. Young, you see. Thank you, President, honourable members. It's clear for every responsibly thinking person that it's our common duty to protect and preserve nature. That is why I welcome the fact that the issue has become a key issue for political decision makers. However, even nature conservation is no longer free of fundamentalists and extremists. On a daily basis, extremist groups are abusing the cause to damage property, harass people. And we have politicians who demand us to take unreasonable and infeasible steps. Mr. Shinkevitsius, we are coming both from former socialist countries. We know how it feels when a five-year plan is pressing us ahead. But are you sure that now that there is a war raging in the Ukraine and then in Hungary, there is a 40% inflation of food prices and there is food shortage when the economic situation is so unstable? Do you think it's a good idea to force such a regulation which has side effects like increasing the burden of garden of farmers. I don't think so. I'm not in favor of it. Intervenire l'onorevole Linz, prego. Mr. Linz, you have the floor. Frau Präsidentin. Madam President, Commissioner. I have some good news from my homeland that I brought with me. We had a monitoring exercise in an intensive orchard and fruit growing area in the, on Lake 
constants, we have twice as many species of bees now than was the case in 2010, 26 of which were considered at risk. So that's a huge success. And who's achieved that? Who'd managed to get this done? Well, it's the farmers, especially the fruit farmers. And what have they done? They've increased the wildflower areas in their orchards. They've had more wild plants that they've managed to seed. That is the path we need to take to go this path together with the farmers. That's a question of best practice. Commissioner, have a look at this. See which regions are more advanced in these issues. See who have turned around the loss of biodiversity, then come back with a new proposal, and in fact a revision of the uh, Nature and Habitats uh, directive because there are other threats elsewhere, such as the wolf population. These are things that you should be taking into consideration. Thank you, Ms. Carvalhais, that's the floor. Caros colegas. Dear colleagues, a nature restoration law is not about setting forests on fire or stealing land from farmers. Rather, it's about moving in the direction of sustainable practices for the conservation and regeneration of natural resources, because otherwise there will be no economic sustainability nor long-term food security. If you restore sensitive marine habitats, such as spawning grounds, you're not attacking fisheries, you're ensuring their long-term survival. Farmers know better than anyone that without living soil, without water, without biodiversity, without pollinizers, you have no farming. Fishers know that better than anyone, that without fish, there's no fishing. So let's stop using these two important sectors as an excuse to pure, pursue objectives which are, in fact, ideological and merely party political scheming. Let's jettison this rhetoric that a nature restoration law is a good idea, but the content of this nature restoration law is bad, because what we'll be voting on tomorrow is the not even the Commission's original uh, proposal. It, this gives Member States flexibility in their actions to define their restoration plans up to 2030. It's not the time for demagogy and scheming. It's time to act for the sake of our own future survival. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you. Ms Müller has the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner, our Vice President, Mr Timmermans, never gets tired of telling us that the regulation on nature restoration will be a law that will help our farmers and foresters. Well, I'm sorry to have to spell this out in such frank terms, but it does sound a lot like an educational campaign from the last century. Uh, the children don't understand, but it's all for their best. Sometimes you just have to force them to be happy. Only farmers and foresters are not little children. They are experts in their area, and they can all too well understand the consequences on their expertise and their areas of professionalism of this law. Yes, we need a law to bolster the resilience of nature. There is climate change that is happening, and we need to adapt ourselves and nature to this fact. But this can only be successful if we have people on board, especially those who, in their daily lives, work with and in nature. And here, the Commission has failed completely. Mr. Alfonsi has the floor. Thank you, President, Commissioner. The Nature Restoration law is vital for the climate. It's also necessary for all Europeans and all territories of Europe, both at land and sea. If you look at the effects of global warming on the Mediterranean, climatologists are very clear about this impact. It's an exceptional environmental uh, heritage. We have very high CO2 absorption capacity, but we're losing our natural environment because of human activity. So we urgently need to act and implement rigorous nature restoration legislation as soon as possible and do what we can with this law, because without this law, it will only be destruction which uh, will uh, prevail. Uh, there is a blue card for you, Mr. Alfonsi, from 
Ronka. We've had a blue card from Ms. Grappini too, but uh, I can't accept that because uh, for the same reasons that I gave in an earlier case, that you already have speaking time, so you cannot be given blue card time. Please speak Polish. Please take the cards. Otóż jesteśmy świadomi tego, że z Unii. Are we aware of the fact that companies are leaving the EU to China, the United States, the United Kingdom? Uh, we, we have a problem with... Uh, abbiamo un problema con... We have a problem with the interpretation, I believe. Is okay? No, no problem. Is okay? Prego, prego, no, uh, uh, Please go ahead. Are we świadomi aware of the fact that are we aware of the fact that there are companies, big companies, leaving the European Union for China, the United States, the United Kingdom. They're moving out because of the tax burden. This uh, regulation could cause unemployment in farming and forestry. Things are only going to get worse. Are you not worried that these restrictive measures are going to lead to higher unemployment, which the European Union will have to deal with. I'd like to hear what you have to say on the subject. Thank you. Global warming has led to a situation where we've seen a loss of nature in the last 50 years in Europe. That's had a terrible impact on areas of economic activity, including farmers. So we need to reverse course for the sake of our citizens, for the sake of our economy and well-being. Bene, grazie. Thank you. Mr. Hackerainen has the floor now. Kiitoksia, puheenjohtaja. Thank you, Mr. President. We've always said that Finland lives from its forests, and that's still true. This regulation would affect our forestry industry, our farming and private property as a whole. In some EU countries, forests are just a memory, and they seem to want to damage ours. It is. If this regulation were to be adopted, the government of Finland should ignore it. I oppose to this I oppose this regulation as a whole. Thank you. Grazie, facoltà di intervenire. Thank you. Mr. Haider has the floor. Mit diesem sogenannten with this so-called nature restoration law. I think in truth there's only one thing we can do with it and it's reject it out of hand. It expropriates farmers. It is going to artificially create shortage of food in Europe and those countries dependent on Europe, it will bring bottlenecks and lead to an increase in prices. With this nonsensical draft, you see the equally nonsensical um, commission with Ursula von der Leyen that you could get rid of at the same time. These sort of ideologically driven policies should be got rid of, and rightly so. The policies of this commission have been destructive. We've seen increase in prices across the board, lack of certainty and pr provision of energy, increased unemployment. You've just brought a curse upon Europe. Every day that this commission remains in office is a black day for Europe. Ms. Pereira has the floor. Thank you very much. Madam President, the nature restoration law was rejected by Agri MV and the Fisheries Committee. Those three committees had a very clear view. They said the proposal was a bad one by Socialist Commissioner Timmermans. And while it may have good intentions, it is 
insufficient and indeed incompetent in terms of protecting the environment, biodiversity and indeed food security in Europe. The EPP response is a clear one. We want to protect the planet and that is why we voted in favour of dozens of amendments, uh, uh, particularly in relation to uh, the uh, climate. But soil degradation in a country such as Portugal has produced uh, vision, victims in recent years. Do we want to see increases in imports from countries that don't have the same environmental safeguards? Do we want to endanger food security? We would call for a nature restoration proposal that would actually uh, achieve that aim. And unfortunately, you can't count on us to do it with this proposal. I was going to give the floor to Mr. Vulcan, but Ms. Pereira, Ms. Pereira, there is a blue card for you from Mr. Silva Pereira. Thank you. Lydia Pereira, you saw the fake news campaign. Amongst the fake news was the idea that uh, forests couldn't be used to combat uh, forest fires. Have you actually read the law? Do you know the content? Because you were engaging in these fake news uh, campaigns. Restoration of uh, nature on the basis of the scientific criteria, and the scientific criteria vary from one country to another, so you'll be aware that this is fake news. Why did you lie? Thank you for the question. I turn the question back to you. Have you read the law? Do you understand that this is a regulation with figures in it, targets, which are the same for all member states? So the environmental circumstances of Portugal are different to the environmental circumstances of an Eastern European country, a Nordic country, France or Germany. So what happens is that in relation to the question which you raise, you have a situation where there is conditionality, uh, ecological conditionality for Portugal. If you're so convinced of, by what you say, go and talk to the farmers outside this door demonstrating in front of Parliament. Mr. Vulcan has the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam President, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. In this debate, there are a lot of fairy tales seeing the light of day. We can see that the leadership of the EPP wasn't, weren't uh, shy of calling the uh, Commission Father Christmas and that uh, this was obviously meant to be humorous but we're looking at an, uh, maintaining that this is going to threaten food security but the opposite is true. It's a question of um, renewable energies not being able to be spread further and that's not true either. In the EPP we've seen that renewable energy legislation was decided on here with an acceleration of extension of renewables and this of course completely rejects out of hand those claims that they're making now. So let's give up on these fairy tales, let's stick to the facts, let's work for nature restoration and all members of the EPP, I call on you to say you can't um, turn your back on this. Vote with us for nature restoration in the European Union. Thank you. Mr. Yogyo has the floor. Madam President, Commissioner, I'm very worried about uh, the proposals uh, for farming. In Poland, were we to adopt this, we would destroy thousands of farms. This would lead to a major weakening of Poland's competitiveness on the single market. The planning uh, and 
the planning management and monitoring provisions are very vague. I understand national authorities would have to uh, act, infringe on private property rights. This would seem to conflict with the aims of other uh, union policies, uh, such as those uh, to do with food supply chains. So I'll be voting against the Commission proposal. Thank you. Mr. Sarvama has the floor. Arvoisa puhemies, arvon kollegat. Mr. President, Commissioner, the Nature Restoration Law is one of the poorest uh, pieces of draft legislation that the Commission has ever come up with. The impact assessments have been done uh, badly. The uh, regulation takes away member states' uh, flexibility. This is not something uh, that can be carried through just like that. The regulation is too uh, detailed. It covers too many uh, areas. The definitions and criteria are vague. The reference year uh, is uh, random from the point of view of the Mendham states. It's uh, appalling that the greatest damage is done to the countries that have the best nature. This has to stop. This has to be done again properly. We want to restore nature, but first and foremost, we want balance in the legislation. Thank you. Ms. Schaldemose has the floor. Naturen er presset. Vi mærker det lige nu. Nature is under pressure, and we can see this now if you drive through Europe on your way to your holidays. We're seeing that there are fewer and fewer insects on your windscreen. There are fewer places where you can get water straight from your tap to, for drinking. We're losing species, but we can act, but we need to have a political will to act. And the Commission has come forth with this political will and a majority in Council as well. But here in the Parliament, the Conservative right wing has decided to jeopardise our future, jeopardise nature. We have to make sure that animals, uh, insects, plants and drinking water can be maintained for the future. And that's why we need to start negotiating now. The Conservatives have put the brakes on far too long. Now we need to make sure that nature will actually win. It's time for nature, and I hope that we'll vote in that line tomorrow. Prego. Mr. Buda has a floor. Madam President, thank you. European farmers are anxiously looking uh, at us. There are 32 regulations that have to be respected by farmers. There are uh, restrictions through the uh, common agricultural policy, pesticide use is uh, down, there's inflation, the war in Ukraine. And now we are to reduce, uh, uh, with this uh, commission proposal, to reduce farmland. And we're seeing that uh, uh, the commission wants to flood areas that have been drained with European funding, and they want to, to give money to farmers with the water buffalo. Unfortunately, this uh, nature restoration, though it sounds good, has created uh, conflict and protests. You want to sacrifice farming, Commissioner, uh, sacrifice farming and food security on the altar of your powerlessness. It is very important for us to have a new proposal based on uh, reality and uh, the partnership approach. Thank you. Mr. Benifei has the floor. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, Madam President. In the Italian Democratic Party and in the Socialist and Social Democrats group, we support the nature restoration law. It's vital to our future because of our degraded environments, including marine environments and forests, we're fighting to achieve adequate resources for an effective green transition with protection of persons and work, whereas 
the right is engaged in an ideological crusade against the environment, against science and against the future generations. We're seeing uh, wastage of uh, funding in, the, in Italy. Greta Thunberg and all of the others who've given us that wake-up call deserve our thanks. Politicians started listening a few years ago. We need to indicate who is responsible for the sake of the future and we need to finally take the right decisions for once and for all. Thank you. The floor now goes to Mr. Helpst. This law is not consistent with other laws dealing with the same area of policy. We can see uh, and the question of what the question of good condition is. Uh, the way the bans are being brought in is not dealt with properly in fisheries, for example, seabed, many unexplored uh, are automatically considered to be in poor condition. These aren't trivial points. These are uh, real evidence of how poorly this has been drafted. And then suddenly the Commission is saying, oh, offshore wind is, is restoration. Uh, now, I'm not against offshore wind farms, but to say that a huge concrete block on the seafloor and kilometres of cables across the seafloor are part of nature restoration, well, it shows that this hasn't been thought through. Maybe people don't care because the objective is worthy. It's got a nice title, this law, but shouldn't be something that we seek to achieve as, as members of Parliament. And if you have concerns, we're being met with people telling us we're bad people. I'm a Christian Democrat. I don't have a problem with that. But the problem is that you're not getting people on board and you're actually destroying nature. Ms. Spiraki, I was going to give you the floor, but no, sorry, Mr. Herbst, there's a blue card for you. A blue card, no, <laughs> a blue card. <laughs> Please. Abbiamo una blue card. We have a blue card for you from Mr. Horse. President, Mr. Herbst, you always have a heart to... President, Mr. Herbst, you claim to be defending the fishers and the fish, but we're seeing the fishermen, uh, fishers being, having their uh, livelihoods destroyed because of pollution and lack of fish. If you look at cod in the Baltic Sea, the nature restoration law will allow a solution to be found for cod. You're also president of the Recreation Fishers Association. And recreational fishers are in favor of this nature restoration law. Mr. Herbst, what would you reply to the fishers when there are no more marine ecosystems in decent condition and when the fishers are going to have to just give up and go home? Also, well, you seem to be mixing up recreational fishing and professional fishing, but leaving that to one side. What I, as an MEP, uh, do and what I do in my private time are two different things. But this assertion that um, in COD, when you're talking about that this is a solution in the Baltic, in this particular law, I'm sorry, that's far-fetched. You won't find any scientist who who will be able to say what the reason is behind the poor stocks of cod. ICs uh, don't know. So in order to say that this law will improve the plight of the cod is something that is a misnomer. Uh, sorry, for me. uh, uh, sorry. OK. If you've finished, I'll give the floor to Ms. Spiraki. No, no problem. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Sigevicius, dear colleagues, climate crisis is now ongoing. And that's why we need a natural restoration law. Not as an additional law to the 23 European laws on rare naturation we have, but as the legal umbrella that will sufficiently accelerate the protection of nature and the restoration of biodiversity, putting at the core of our attention people's concern. And the amendments we co-sign in the EPP and we have already tabled are addressing various issues to this direction. In my opinion, dear Commissioner, it is the Council General approach which is a good basis for negotiation, 
taking into account the override public interest for the deployment of renewables and defence facilities as well, giving the Member States sufficient flexibility complementary to the requirement of national restoration plans. And in my country, the government of Kyriakos Mitsotakis in Greece has supported natural rehabilitation not only in the Council but also in real practice with various initiatives and projects. In addition, we have to ensure that the proposed financing of measures required by national restoration law will not lead in cuts in other budget lines, starting with common agricultural policy. We need clarifications coming from the Commission, a clear wording. We need a compromise on the basis of the general approach as soon as possible. The natural restoration law should not be a battlefield in view of the upcoming European election. On the contrary, it is a unique challenge for a real reform to the protection of nature. It is our joint obligation, not only to the nature, but also to the next generation. Thank you. Thank you. As you know, time is against us. We have a lot of requests for uh, blue cards. No, sorry, uh, we have a lot of requests for catch the eye. We've already had a lot of blue cards. We're moving on to catch the eye now. There's a lot of people on the list. I'll only take one per political group. We'll start with the EPP. Mr. Bogovic. Thank you. Thank you for this excellent debate which has demonstrated the split down the middle of this parliament. The proposal is uh, a complex uh, one. In uh, Slovenia, we have a great deal of forest and a great deal of nature and biodiversity. It is important to take into account the differences between member states. 10% of farmland is to be taken away even where there isn't much farming. And how are we going to get rid of all of these hydropower stations? And flooding farmland is not necessarily a good idea. We need a, a new proposal with sensible measures, funded measures, and with the support of uh, farmers, uh, which we don't have today. Ms. Serdas has a floor. Brigada President. Thank you, Madam President. This is crucial to biodiversity and the European Green Deal. 80% of our ecosystems are in a poor state. If you have dead soil rather than living soil, then you cannot produce food. So we're talking about uh, our sustainable agriculture and food security of the future. What we need to do is invest in restoring nature. That is good for the economy. We get 38 euros back for every eight euros we invest. It's an incredibly sensitive sector for Portugal, looking at indicators for forestry. That is a member state responsibility. That's what the Commission proposal says. So we need to shoulder our responsibilities, uh, those who voted against in the Environmental Com Committee. We need to put this piece into the jigsaw puzzle to combat climate change and only in this way will we be able to combat climate, climate change deniers. It is high time to act. Thank you. Uh, Vizic has the floor. Thank you. If we don't uh, reinvigorate our ecosystems, then we won't have any farming, forestry or fishing as a result of the climate crisis. Thousands of scientists, including myself, have appealed to Parliament uh, to think about the terrible state of our ecosystems.
what we're seeing is uh, fake news, the distortion of reality, and a party which stops its people voting according to their conscience. I hope that in this parliament we'll have enough courage and awareness to vote in favour of ambitious nature restoration. It's crucial. It's about life and the future. Thank you. Tavola di intervenire l'onorevole Aguilar. Aguilar has the floor. Grazie, signora Presidente. Thank you, Madam President. I'm still at a loss to understand how you can have three committees, Agriculture, Fisheries and Environment, uh, reject a proposal and then still put it forward tomorrow. It's uh, meaningless and uh, harmful to farmers and uh, fishers. And uh, on top of all that, they're saying that uh, funding should come from our uh, fisheries uh, and other EU policies so those in the sector would see their income drop even further. So what are people in Europe going to eat? It will be imports. We have less arable and livestock land and have more photovoltaics and uh, wind farms and so on. What are we going to eat? So tomorrow we need to defend the farming and fisheries sectors. The socialists must be really worried about the forthcoming general elections in Spain. They're using this podium to attack the EPP and Vox. It's probably just because they're so worried about the elections. Daily, prego. Ms. Daly has the floor. Grazie, Presidente. What should have been a discussion about a far more ambitious programme than what we have here, if we're to save the planet and nature, has turned into really one of the crassest campaigns of disinformation by opportunist politicians and a media completely incapable of holding them to account. Members on all sides have been using it to play to their own audience and I have to say I find it utterly demoralising. Why is this issue decisive? It's understandable, of course, that people would be annoyed with an arrogant commission and with the botched jobs on previous EU regulations, but that's not a reason for misrepresenting this one. Everyone wants an end to the devastating yearly droughts and floods. Everybody wants consultation, predictable incomes. They want to keep traditions alive. They want to be financially rewarded for going the extra mile. They want to have a future to look to with bees and bogs and everything in between. We can have that with this law. There can be a just transition. There's no good reason to vote against it. Bene, e infine, per i non Thank you. And Mr. Tarabella for the non-attached. Proposition de loi sur la restauration. Thank you very much. This proposal on nature restoration is something to stop the collapse of our ecosystems and counter the lack of biodiversity, the loss of biodiversity. I think saying that, we've said everything. I think nature needs to provide us with a path to the future. 50% of the members present thought it was wise to reject this text. They thought it was better or more beneficial, profitable, to pander to the petrochemical industry and reject the text. Uh, some of the text may be worse than other parts, but from the start of this term of office, the right have been trying to bury the Green Deal and uh, stymie legislation of this nature. Now, if you want to have a decent future, I'd encourage you to vote in favour of this. I shall now give the floor to Commissioner Sinkevitsius on behalf of the Commission. You have the right to reply. President, honourable members, I've listened very carefully to your interventions today and I would like to thank everybody for engaging in this important debate this morning. And I'm glad we are having this broad public debate on such an important topic. Nature deserves this public attention. So what can we take away from today's debate? First, I think it has illustrated very well what's at stake. It has shown that stakes are high and that nature will not allow us to lose time. Far too much of Europe's nature has now been degraded or destroyed. And it's vital to reverse that trend, and time is running out. And the world is watching us. 
so do our children. And we all need to take responsibilities. If we want to deliver on Europe's global biodiversity commitments agreed at COP15 in Montreal in December 2022, if we want to maintain the role of the EU as a global climate leader, we have to deliver. Nature restoration is not a luxury legislation. Healthy ecosystems, they are just fundamental asset of our economy and society. And we cannot simply opt out or postpone. And today I hear again uh, that the Green Deal is not the nature restoration law. Honorable members, yes, it is. This law is the flagship initiative of the European Green Deal. Nature and biodiversity is a key pillar and the equivalent of the climate law for nature. And it is the first dedicated EU legal proposal on nature since 30 years. You may be surprised to hear this, but to me this debate has shown that an agreement is possible if we remain engaged and if we take our responsibilities. Why well, I'm rather optimistic. Because most of your interventions have shown that there is a willingness to discuss this law. And because even those of you who claim that this law has to be rejected have proposed amendments. This is positive, and this is what the co-legislators co and co-decision process is all about. And if there is anything to change or improve, the Commission here is to discuss and support you. This is our role, to facilitate an agreement. And this is what we are determined to do. And I'm optimistic because today I have heard concerns on issues which have already been addressed and solved on council side and which we have already ref reflected in the non-paper on the 8th of June. And in spite of our genuine efforts to clarify and explain, I still hear and read many misconceptions and misunderstandings. I still hear questions to which there are very straightforward answers, uh, which we have already provided to many of you on bilateral basis, but which are more than happy to reiterate. So let me mention just a few of them. Ms. Sander and Mr. Mato. You raised concern that nature restoration will impact food security and that we are going to increase food imports. Well, the EU food system has achieved a high level of security and a wide offer for consumers. And actually 20% of food in the EU goes to waste. The challenge is to maintain the EU agricultural food production potential to ensure food security in the mid to long term. And this requires transition to sustainable food production and sustainable food system. I'm afraid that not a food availability is the issue, but food affordability. The biggest threat to food security in the EU and globally are the combined interlinked climate and biodiversity crisis, le leading to depletion of soil, pollinators loss, desertification and drought. And this reflected in the very comprehensive study on the drivers of food security, which Commission published in January. So I heard Ms. Snyder ask for data and impact assessment. All data on the relation between healthy ecosystem and food security can be found there. And on food security, I make a plea to all of you who have expressed concern to actually look at Article 9 of the proposal and see with your own eyes what this article is about. Requirements are about increasing trends in indicators, which scientists tell us are the best proxies to tell us the health of our agriculture. And member states can set their own levels to be achieved on those indicators. So when we talk about regional dimension, member states' flexibilities, they are there. Mr. Wondra and Mr. Dorfman, also Mr. Torwalds, you expressed concern that the proposal would put member states into a straitjacket. The opposite is true. It provides for a large degree of flexibility and subsidiarity. It will be for member states to decide which restoration measures they wish to put in place, where and when. And the proposal asks member states to do this together with stakeholders, involving them closely, all of them. And that means farmers, foresters, fishers, civil society, scientists. Ms. Zalewska, let me also reassure, reassure you that the Commission will only assess member states' plans to see the EU trends, but it will not approve or validate them. 
Mr. Lisa, you and some other member states have expressed concern that the nature restoration law would hamper hydropower from dam removals in rivers. Nowhere does the nature restoration law proposal require the establishment of hydropower. To the contrary, it says literally, Article 7.2, member states shall primarily address obsolete barriers which are those that are no longer needed for renewable energy generation or other uses. So we would, so we would expect member states to target primary obsolete barriers. Experts estimated that at least 20% of all barriers in the EU are obsolete. So they no longer serve any purpose. The number of hydropower plants in the EU is estimated to be 23,000, which represents barely 2% in the total number of barriers. It's therefore be possible easily to respect the proposed requirements without having impact on hydroelectricity generation. And Mr. Lise, you said we need to make compromises to reconcile nature protection and economic activities or infrastructure. And you said you believe in cooperation. I'm glad to hear this because I hope you are ready to finalize this co-decision procedure in the same constructive spirit as we have started one year ago. Or I would say four years ago when the first time I've met you and we had a discussion on this upcoming mandate. And finally, let me also use this opportunity to clarify once for all uh, that the nature restoration law will not put 10% land out of production. First of all, the 10% is not a mandatory target, neither for individual member states, especially not for a farm level. Hence, there is no obligation for individual farmers to take 10% of their land out of production. It is mentioned as benchmark referring to the EU level objective set in the EU biodiversity strategy for 2030. Member states are asked to increase the share of agriculture land with high diversity landscape features at national level until a satisfactory level is reached. Member states would define themselves in their national restoration plans the satisfactory level they aim to achieve. And that level could be way below 10%. And as stressed in the non-paper, the Commission is ready to clarify objective of this provision and adapt if it's necessary. Dear colleagues, last but not least, I remain optimistic because I know that since the beginning of this mandate, we have always worked constructively. We have always shown that we can find compromises and solutions. We carve them out in the most difficult legislations. And we have already reached agreements on many important files, sometimes very difficult files. And it would be regretful and difficult to explain why we didn't manage to do so also for one of the most important pieces of the legislation of the European Green Deal. Honorable members, let me be very clear and honest. A compromise is possible and in reach. The divergences are not as big as to justify rejection. Other files have been even more complicated, and we managed it. I sincerely hope we will not miss this opportunity to bring nature restoration law to a successful conclusion. The Commission will play its role as honest broker and do everything it can make to make it happen. Honorable members, some of you voiced concerns that this law may hamper our economies, putting farmers, foresters, fishers out of work. Let me be clear, there will be no work, no income when nature is sick. Today we are proposing the medicine. The first to benefit from this medicine will be the, those whose livelihoods directly depend on our natural resources. They need nature to be healthy. They need that for the resilience and productivity of the land, of the seas, they need it to ensure food security. Some of you said that they are in favor of nature restoration, but they simply ask for a new proposal from the Commission. Let me be very clear. We do have a proposal. A proposal based on solid impact assessment. A proposal that has already evolved, on which we have presented a non-paper in June, and on which member states have already presented many amendments, touching upon many issues also raised in this House. A proposal on which until April all groups work constructively, proposed important amendments, a proposal on which even those groups who plead for rejection have now tabled amendments for the plenary vote tomorrow. 
honourable members, this is called co-decision. Let's finalise this process. It is possible. And with a constructive approach, we could conclude it actually quite quickly. Let's not miss this opportunity. We cannot lose time and we don't need to lose time. Restoration is our best hope of getting nature back in shape. We need that for climate mitigation. We need that for climate adaptation. We need that for our economy. The world is watching us. Our citizens are watching. We set the pace at COP15 in Montreal. And this is our chance to deliver at home, proving to the world that it can be done, proving to our citizens that we keep our promises. Last time, honorable members, let's secure a better future for our citizens, our farmers, our fishers, our businesses, our children. Thank you. Grazie a lei. Thank you very much indeed, Commissioner Sintiewicz. And now may I call the Rapporteur to reply the, to the debate, Mr. Lueno. Muy bien, Presidenta, gracias. Thank you very much indeed, President. I shall only give a few concluding remarks. I'd like to thank all those who've contributed to the debate. There were many. Many, I think, have defended the draft legislation very well. I'd like to thank the Commissioner exceptionally because the Commissioner and his whole team have been very supportive, obviously. We've had to contend with a lot of disinformation. The Fisheries Committee did reject the test. The Environment Committee did not. I'd like to make that quite clear. And I'd like to thank all the Secretariat of Envy and everybody else who contributed in such a positive way to all the work that's happened there. But I have a few minutes remaining to me. I'd simply like to say we've listened to a lot of UPP members, some are still here, some are not, who dislike this legislation. We're in a parliament here, obviously. We're going to amend the legislation. We're going to correct it, but we're not going to block it because that is an anti-system approach. This is not something which parliaments do, simply decide to blockade things. No, I don't think we have time for a blue card, Mr. Erhel. I don't wish to take one just now. Therefore, we need to continue in negotiation. That is what we, the way forward, negotiation. This is what I have been saying for some time. I stand here m with my hands held out to you, asking the EPP, asking everybody to come to the negotiating table to discuss it, to participate in trialogues, to participate in discussion, so that we can shape the legislation together. Because in the end of the day, we negotiate, we vote. We, have to, we will vote on the Council's common approach and Ireland, Greece, Lithuania and Romania have submitted amendments. We will also be voting on the amendments submitted here in Parliament by the EPP. This is not a, legislation, a piece of legislation against nature. It's against nobody. It disadvantages nobody. We in this Parliament are here to defend nature and to defend Europe in the world. And this is one piece of that mosaic. And I'm therefore optimistic and I hope that some of the, conserva the Conservatives will join with me in supporting this legislation for nature. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed to the Rapporteur. This concludes that debate. May I thank all colleagues who participated in what was a very rich debate, which of course is only right for such an important piece of legislation. As you all know, the vote will take place tomorrow. We now move on to the next report, which is from Mr Nika, and it's on the European CHIPS Act. May I therefore give the floor to the Rapporteur. Thank you so much, uh, uh, dear President. Commissioner Breton, it's a pleasure to see you again after long days of negotiations. Uh, on April uh, 18, after a swift 